Have you ever wondered how atoms stick together to form different substances? It's almost like they've got an invisible superglue, right? Well, in a way, they do. But before we dive into that, let's take a step back and understand what atoms are. Atoms are the building blocks of everything around us, from the air we breathe to the screen you're watching this video on. They are incredibly tiny particles, so small that millions of them would fit on the head of a pin. Each atom consists of a nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons, surrounded by electrons. Now imagine atoms as social creatures. They don't like being alone. So they form groups, or as we like to call them, molecules. But how do they do this? That's where our invisible superglue comes into play. And it's called a chemical bond. Chemical bonds are the heart of chemistry, the invisible ties that hold atoms together. They are the reason why water is liquid, why diamond is hard and why salt is salty. Without chemical bonds, the world as we know it wouldn't exist. There are different types of chemical bonds and each one has its own unique characteristics. Some bonds are strong and rigid, like the bond between a parent and child. Others are more flexible, like the bond between friends. And some bonds are charged with energy, like the bond between a battery and a light bulb. The type of bond that forms between atoms depends on their properties, such as the number of electrons they have and their position in the periodic table. But no matter what type of bond forms, the result is always the same. Atoms stick together to form substances. So the next time you look at a glass of water, a diamond ring, or a pinch of salt, remember the invisible superglue that's holding everything together. In the world of atoms, bonding is the name of the game. Imagine a world where opposites attract. That's the world of ionic bonds. In this fascinating realm, atoms don't believe in the saying, birds of a feather flock together. Instead, they live by the motto, opposites attract. So, what exactly are ionic bonds? Let's break it down. An ionic bond is a type of chemical bond that occurs when an atom transfers an electron to another atom. It's like a game of give and take, but instead of exchanging gifts, atoms exchange electrons. This process results in charged particles called ions. Let's take a familiar example. Table salt, also known as sodium chloride. It's a classic example of an ionic bond in action. Sodium, a metal, is a generous giver. It has one electron in its outermost shell that it's willing to part with. On the other hand, chlorine, a non-metal, is a bit of a taker. It's just one electron short of having a full outer shell. When sodium and chlorine meet, sodium gives up its electron to chlorine. This act of giving and receiving changes the game completely. Sodium, after losing its electron, becomes a positively charged ion, while chlorine, after gaining an electron, becomes a negatively charged ion. But why does sodium give its electron to chlorine? Well, it's all about achieving stability. Atoms strive to have a full outer shell of electrons, a state known as the noble gas configuration. Sodium, by giving up its lone outer electron, achieves this state, and chlorine, by gaining an electron, also reaches this coveted state. These oppositely charged ions are then drawn to each other, creating a bond, an ionic bond. This bond holds them together, creating the table salt we sprinkle on our fries. This strong attraction between positive and negative ions is what gives ionic compounds like table salt their unique properties, such as high melting and boiling points. Ionic bonds, a perfect example of how opposites attract. They show us that sometimes giving up can lead to gaining something much more valuable, stability and balance. And in the world of atoms, that's a big deal. What happens when atoms decide to share instead of steal? They form covalent bonds. To understand covalent bonds, let's first take a step back and consider atoms. Atoms are like tiny universes, with a central core of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of electrons. These electrons are the currency of atomic interactions, and atoms can either gain, lose, or share these electrons to form bonds with other atoms. In the realm of covalent bonds, sharing is the name of the game. Covalent bonds form when atoms share electrons, creating a stable connection that keeps them bound together. This sharing isn't always equal. Sometimes one atom pulls the shared electrons closer than the other. But the important thing is they're sharing, not stealing. To illustrate this, let's consider a molecule we're all familiar with, water or H2O. A water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen atoms each have one electron, but they need two to be stable. Similarly, the oxygen atom has six electrons, but it needs eight to be stable. So they strike a deal the hydrogen atoms share their electrons with the oxygen atom, 
and the oxygen atom shares its electrons with the hydrogen atoms. In this way, the oxygen atom gets to complete its eight electron quota, and the hydrogen atoms each get their two electron quota. It's a win-win situation. This sharing of electrons forms a covalent bond, making a water molecule one of the simplest examples of a molecule formed by covalent bonding. But here's the catch. The oxygen atom is a bit of a control freak. It pulls the shared electrons closer to itself, making the water molecule slightly charged. This polarity is what gives water its unique properties, like its ability to dissolve many substances, which makes it the universal solvent. Covalent bonds, a testament to the power of sharing. And remember, sharing is caring, especially in the world of atoms. Imagine a sea of electrons flowing freely. You've just envisioned metallic bonds. In the fascinating world of chemistry, one can't ignore the allure and versatility of metallic bonds. Unlike ionic or covalent bonds, where electrons are either transferred or shared between atoms respectively, metallic bonds work a bit differently. Picture a bustling city, with atoms as buildings and electrons as the inhabitants. In this city, electrons aren't confined to a single building or atom. Instead, they move freely from one atom to another, creating a so-called sea of electrons. This unique setup is the core of metallic bonding. Now, why is this important? Well, this freedom of electron movement is what gives metals their remarkable properties. Ever wondered why metals shine or why a copper wire conducts electricity? That's metallic bonding at work. Consider a copper wire. Copper atoms are closely packed together, their electrons mingling freely. When you introduce an electric current to one end of the wire, it's like sending a ripple through our city of electrons. The current, or energy, is quickly passed from one electron to another, traversing the entire length of the wire almost instantaneously. This is why metals like copper are such excellent conductors of electricity. But that's not all. The free movement of electrons also contributes to the malleability and ductility of metals. You can hammer a metal into a thin sheet or draw it into a wire without it breaking. This is because as you apply force, the atoms can slide past each other while still maintaining the bond. The sea of electrons adjusts and adapts, allowing the metal to change shape without shattering. In short, the flexibility of metallic bonds grants metals their characteristic properties. Whether it's the sparkle of gold, the conductivity of copper, or the malleability of iron, metallic bonds are the unsung heroes behind it all. Metallic bonds, the reason behind the shine of metals and their ability to conduct electricity. We've taken a journey through the world of atoms and their bonds. Now let's summarize what we've learned. Picture a world where atoms are the main characters, each playing a unique role in the grand scheme of things. Their roles are defined by the type of bonds they form, ionic, covalent, or metallic. These bonds, as different as they are, all have one thing in common. They bring atoms together to create the diverse array of substances we encounter in our everyday lives. Let's take a quick detour back to ionic bonds. These are the bonds that form when one atom donates an electron to another, creating ions that are positively or negatively charged. The resulting electrical attraction between these ions forms a strong bond. This is what gives us substances like table salt, where sodium and chlorine ions come together in a perfect lattice. Then we have covalent bonds, the bonds that form when atoms decide to share electrons instead of donating or accepting them. This type of bond results in a stable molecule where electrons are shared equally, creating substances like water, where hydrogen and oxygen share electrons to form a molecule that's essential for life as we know it. Finally, we have metallic bonds. These are the bonds that give metals their characteristic properties. In a metallic bond, electrons are free to move around, creating a sea of electrons. This allows metals to conduct electricity and heat, and gives them their malleability and ductility. Each of these bonds, ionic, covalent and metallic, plays a crucial role in the world of atoms. They are the ties that bind atoms together, creating the diverse array of substances we see around us. They're not just about bringing atoms together, they're about creating stability, flexibility, and power. Remember, in the world of atoms, bonding isn't just a social activity, it's a matter of survival.